Welcome to eCancer TV at the Echo ESMO meeting in Berlin. Flying start, great weather, 15,000 people. Really, really busy in all the corridors and in the poster sessions and in the halls. The big splash was the presidential kickoff and it was, uh, it was impressive. Uh, Peter Schlag is the host here, well-known oncologist, surgeon, and uh, he uh, told us about the massive uh, cancer hospital uh, in, uh, in Berlin, the charity. Um, Lex Egermont, who's the president of ECHO, he comes from Rotterdam, uh, told us about the uh, policy sessions which they've specially tracked in uh, the ECHO ESMO meeting uh, this year, about the young oncologist uh, track and the patient advocacy track, all really exciting things. And the partner in crime, uh, who's uh, Jose Baselga from uh, Barcelona, uh, he uh, pledged that this was not just a, a one-off meeting between ESMO and ECHO, this was the start of a really important uh, uh, organizational shift where people came together in a serious way from all the disciplines involved in, uh, in cancer care, including uh, the important person, the patients themselves, and, uh, and that this was the, the way that we were going to make a difference and, and make an impact on cancer survival rates in Europe. The science has begun to, uh, to trickle in. There's some exciting information uh, about uh, pemetrexid in uh, lung cancer, uh, dose-dense chemotherapy in ovarian cancer, primary uh, central nervous system lymphomas, a uh, uh, new uh, drug there, iplumumab in, uh, in uh, melanoma, and uh, a, a number of, uh, of interesting variations on the theme. Uh, new data on uh, aromatase inhibitors up front in adjuvant hormone-sensitive breast cancer. Seems like letrozole is, uh, is setting the pace there. And then there was a lot of uh, interest in uh, bone uh, sparing and, and, and perhaps um, bone building uh, drugs. Uh, there's uh, the old favorites, the solidronic acid is now looking to be not just a, a bone sparing drug but maybe an anti-cancer drug. And then uh, there's a new kid on the block, Tezumuzumab, which we'll hear about a little bit uh, later on in the conference. But I have to say that for me the star of the show so far on uh, day one when we're all uh, basking in the sunshine has been Professor John Byrne from Newcastle University in the UK who uh, has the patience of a saint. He started off on a very long, uh, drawn-out uh, survey, a chemoprevention uh, intervention type of uh, survey in patients who have a very high familial risk of getting bowel cancer. Bowel cancer is a very common disease and mostly presents uh, too late for, for cure. So catching uh, patients early, uh, particularly those who've got a genetic predisposition, absolutely vital. And there's been a lot of evidence around that the German drug, appropriately here in Berlin, 101 years old, aspirin, the simple aspirin, might do something to prevent bowel cancer in uh, patients who are predisposed. So 12, uh, 13, 14 years ago, uh, John Byrne set out on a very big study comparing these people at, uh, at special risk, who've got this curiously called Lynch syndrome, randomizing them to aspirin. Simple, straightforward aspirin, 600 milligrams versus a placebo. Identical, nobody knew uh, which they were on, and uh, they've been following that. Now, the dogma, uh, the, the, the gray-haired people in uh, grant-giving committees like me uh, felt that uh, adenoma, that's the little wart that you get on the inside of the colon, that that would be a good intermediate uh, marker of whether this aspirin intervention was doing any good at all. And at 10 years, the analysis was uh, done and the, there was no effect. Uh, 66 uh, adenoma patients in one arm of uh, over 1,000 uh, volunteers and in the other 1,000 or so volunteers, 67. So really nothing going. The article went to the New England Journal of Medicine and everybody said, well, aspirin's no good, including the funding organizations who withdrew the funding from Professor Byrne and uh, he had to struggle to continue uh, the study with his own funding to the really important endpoint, cancer. And here he's shown at ECHO for the first time that if you look at the patients who get cancer of the colon, then there's a massive effect of aspirin. There are 17 volunteers in the aspirin uh, group who went on to get proper bowel cancer, and there were 60-odd in the no-intervention group. Two-to-one uh, effect of aspirin in terms of sparing these high-risk people with bowel cancer for getting 
uh, what can be a, a very uh, nasty disease, uh, bowel cancer. This has immense implications for chemo prevention studies, for looking at other genetic uh, uh, linked uh, conditions. Uh, some patients with Lynch, Lynch can cancers or Lynch uh, predispositions don't just get colon cancer, but they also get uh, some ovary cancer or endometrial cancer if they're, if they're women. And there might be a link to breast. So this whole area is, is cracking up. But here is some really good news, particularly for those families with Lynch. So more to come tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that.